What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to Park to Prem here with Town or Town. Today it is episode number 46. It's a live com double header. York, York Town, I was about to say, no, York City and Stockport County are the two teams we're taking on. I don't know where York Town came from. I've been to York. There's a lovely Viking museum there. That's a tangent. Anyway, let's move on from that, shall we? Today I thought we'd start on the profile of Leighton Stewart because someone left a comment yesterday and it upset me. It, it, I don't want to say it struck a nerve, but it just upset me a little bit. And he said, Leighton Stewart's rubbish. Why can he score so many? And whilst I'll, I will hold my hands up and say, you know, there's definitely gaps in his game, he can dribble, he's quick, fantastic anticipation, his composure and off the ball for this level are very, very good. And to be honest, what he's good at, he's very good at. And so he really excels, especially because the stuff that he's good at is just everything that really goes into goal scoring. Obviously, anticipation and acceleration allow him to get into space quickly. Very good dribbling, coupled with his good pace, agility is kind of okay, and balance is superb. I would love it if he could pass a little bit better and if he was would work a little bit harder and make better decisions. But at this level, you kind of end up having players with these natural gaps in their game. And, well, you can see here, 20 goals and 5 assists in 25... Oh, no, 24 games this season. So 25 goal contributions in 24. That's pretty impressive, if you ask me. And obviously, the fans, they clearly really respect it. You can see here, could be a decent League One striker in the future. Oh, that, that would be incredible if he could continue up the ranks with us. We'll hope that that very much is the case. And, well... Let's get into the game, shall we? We're not gonna we're not gonna hang around too much. There was actually one match since you were last here. It was against Newport County, who were predicted to finish eighth and currently languished down in 22nd in the league. As you can see here, a convincing 4-0 win, and while Leighton Stewart with a hat trick. Let's savor these goals. I'm I'm not sure if this was a perfect hat trick with a finish with either foot and a headed goal, but he got the headed goal certainly. I'll let you guys decide. The first goal, a bit of a weird one, but this was a great little performance against Newport County. Callum Jones from centre mid getting a pick of the bunch in terms of goals, I guess, with his uh, only goal of the game and the fourth for us. But the big, big, I guess, plus from this match was another clean sheet in a row. That is four clean sheets in a row in all competitions, three in a row in the National League. And in those three National League games, it's been Smolio in goal for every single one of them. Five clean sheets in ten games for him, and things are starting to look a little up here. And with that win, you might be a little bit perplexed, because we were due to play two games. But the game that we were due to play against Sully Hall Moors was rained off. Our pitch got waterlogged. I hope that today's game now hasn't been postponed. I probably should have checked that before I hit start recording. We'll, we'll hope that it's not. You can see in terms of the league, with that game kind of cancelled, we have a game in hand now on York City. If we could win against them here and now, we would be one point behind them with two games in hand. And of course, Stockport County ahead of us in the league, but one of their games that they have in hand on the teams behind them is the game against us. So, yeah, going to be very interesting today. You can see Stockport and York, not the craziest in terms of goal scoring, but they are the two teams with the best defences in the league. So whilst last episode we had a nil-nil, this, this could be another nil-nil. You can see here, Kettering v Swindon's been postponed. It's a rainy winter here in the Vanarama National League and in England, it would appear. So anyway, in terms of team news for today's game, nothing too crazy going on. Johnny Howard slowly but surely coming back to fitness. I would love to start bedding him into the first team a little bit more. But in terms of our team for today's game, it's more of the same, really. I have been giving Kane Patterson the odd appearance at right back, and I want to continue to do that because Dunstan's contract is up at the end of the year. I do want to offer him a new contract. But as you can see here, our talks broke down because he wanted £2,000 a week and I'm not willing to make him the highest earner at the club. That seems absolutely crazy to me. Of course, in goal, as I mentioned, we're going to stick with Smolio. I feel like we've just got to give him a run of games now to hope that he can realise his potential has already improved an incredible amount this year. At centre-back, it's going to be the GG partnership. Gouda, who... In terms of development, really hasn't developed this year, unfortunately. He has got potential to be a League One player, but a little way off that right now. Um, he is going to be playing at right centre-back. And at left centre-back, we're going to go with Gouda. I think I said Gouda when I meant Gannon. They get confusing. I don't know why. I guess it's because they both begin with Gs and have loads of, loads of Os in their name. And by loads, I mean they have three between them. It's a, it's a weak argument, I'll admit it. 
I am going to try something a little bit different here. I was looking through some match stats, and I noticed that our centre-backs were giving away the ball quite a lot. So we're going to try an instruction of pass it shorter on the two centre-backs. I'm a little worried they're going to be isolated and that with only two centre-mids to pick out and no wider midfielders, we might you know, cut them off and play in shorter passing might kind of see us get undone. On the flip side, it might help us to hold on to possession a little bit better because our goalkeepers have had some of the best pass completion in our team, and our centre-backs, by contrast, have had something between about 60 and 65%, which, frankly, is shocking. So we'll see how that changes things there. The rest of the team, though, kind of picks itself. We're going to go with Stuart and Impala up front. You can see here, if we just look at the uh, recent form for our starting eleven, everyone's playing very, very well. So I'm willing to stick with it. I'm willing to give them more opportunities. The fact that we had a game postponed against Solihull Moors means that we go into this game very, very fresh. We actually got a whole week off, which hasn't happened all that often. You can see York City here. They're going to be playing a 5-3-2 of sorts. Um, they've got here Damani Mella in the team. I recognise this guy because they signed him for a decent chunk of cash during the preseason, you can see £60,000 spent for this guy. Um, played regularly in League One, although didn't exactly put in great performances and he's not been superb for York. Their big star man, however, is Jim Stainkey. Um, You can see here a Scottish under-19 international, 21 years old. For this level, this guy is absolutely insane. He started at Basford, York picked him up. He's got 77 goals in 180 games, aged 21. A bit of a physical specimen. We're going to have to be wary of him. And, well, let's see how we get on. It's not often, to be honest, that, that we've come up against a formation like this. A 5-3-2 of sorts, I suppose. It'll be interesting to see how high their wing-backs get up the pitch. It may well be the case that our inverted wingers can get a little bit of grass to run into. We'll have to see how that works out as we have an early set piece here. I'm hoping we're not having another nil-nil. Um... Realistically now, if we want to challenge for the title, we need to win both of these games quite convincingly. These are two of the best teams in the division, two of the best defences in the league. We're known for our goal scoring. Will we cancel each other out or can we find the breakthroughs? A Dunstan inside falls to Mampala. We'll take that. That is a gift in our direction. Two minutes gone. Could not have wished for a better start. It all came from a Dunstan's uh, run down the line. Just finding an overlap. And that's something that we may be able to expose in this game. One issue that I've always had in Football Manager, when you play with wing-backs and, you know, no wide midfielders, they can very easily get overrun in the wide areas, particularly if you're playing a team like ourselves, who we have our wing-backs, we want them to get up the pitch, we have our inverted wingers cutting inside. There is lots of space in the wide areas to be exposed, and we've done that so far in this game. You can see 60% of possession after 20 minutes we are dominating this game statistically we're gonna need a goal or two though it feels like i did notice stockport in their game currently drawing 1-1 we could do with them slipping up between now and the end of the year maybe this is where it can happen for us we will hope anyway you can see here they're still jumbling around their team but they're not really getting anything from it one nil at the break not exactly a classic in terms of highlights but this is a result that we desperately need and I don't care how we win as long as we win. And if we could keep another clean sheet here, that would be good. Four in a row it would be in the league. That would be kind of unprecedented for us as the ball. Did anyone else just see the ball balance on the crossbar there? That was incredible. It's apparently a corner. I'm not sure how or why, but we'll take it. That was weird. Can we make anything of this set piece? Gouda, DKM, whips it in, headed away. He was up, he was offside. Someone, someone teach him the offside rule. Is it weird to say that this is one of those games where I almost don't want to make any subs? To be fair, there's a few players who haven't really performed so far. So maybe I should make some. We'll bring in Brania Diaz, the Venezuelan. I always get excited when this guy gets on. He's not much of a box-to-box -box midfielder. But in this kind of game, I think he can do the job for us. He's a very good passer of the ball. And you know what? I'm going to take off... Do I want to take off Leighton Stewart for a miss -a -door? Or Kamwenda, perhaps? You know what? I'm going to bring in Kamwenda. Let's give the schoolboy the chance. Club leader, kind of player who can come on in this game. Head switched on, keep our players' heads in it, hopefully, for the last 15 minutes. We've dominated this game. 
64% of possession. It is just swinging more and more in our favour. Set piece here. Diaz on off the bench. Whips it. Trying to pick out Kumwenda. Now we need to panic. Now we need to be scared. They are breaking and breaking fast here at York City. Although what a tackle by Warrington there. Now with Wern. Stephen with a P. What can you do, Stephen? What can you do, Stephen? Find the back of the net is the answer. 2-0. That should be that. He does a roly-poly. I mean, it's an appropriate reaction, I think. What a lovely run. Warrington with a fantastic tackle there that really can't be understated. And then Wern, they back off him. They back off him. And in their haste, I guess, to spring the counter-attack, we've played an Uno reverse card on York City there. Back to you and back in the back of their net. And now... Well, we need to just hold on here as the header goes narrowly over. The first real chance of note for York. I did notice there. Apparently, we've hit the woodwork five times. I think that is from the ball bouncing on top of the crossbar where I thought it got stuck. And it's just counted it a load of times. We're, we're going to claim that we've dominated the game and got unlucky. We could have a third here. Mampala hits it. Probably should have crossed it in hindsight. That was not a favourable angle for the effort. York City... They are beaten here. There's a minute and a half left. No chance they're coming back in this. We do have a set piece to deal with here. I, I want to keep the clean sheet. We've not had a run of clean sheets in so long. And then Smolio comes in and it all changes. DK, and what a run this is. Kumwenda, can he find it? He squares it. I mean, that's what Mampala should have done for Kumwenda with his chance. Fortunately, the schoolboy knows better. Unfortunately, the game says, you know what? Your pass didn't go straight to Mampala. We're not giving you an assist for the record books, but we know who the true hero was there. What an unselfish pass. And Mampala, in the right place, at the right time, makes it 3-0. What a result that is. And that makes the Newport County 4-0 not look like a fluke. That's the first time in a long, long while here at Law where I feel like in a live com, we've got... A really emphatic result against a team that we desperately needed to beat. Traditionally, they've been quite close affairs. I did notice there as well, a Dunstan with 96% pass completion is incredible. We really did dominate that game. I wonder if some of that possession is just down to our centre-backs playing the ball shorter. I will certainly claim some credit for that. Mampala, superb in front of goal. Still not signed a new deal. Still got interest from Ebb's fleet. So I've set an asking price of £600,000. I think that's how much I would be willing to let him go for. In truth, I just don't really want to sell him at all. But I realise the fact that if the right offer came in, he may have to move on. It's kind of interesting, actually. Mampala and Leighton Stewart. Really not a great deal of difference between them. They're quite similar players. The big thing in Mampala's favour is just his great determination and his very good leadership as well. But anyway, let's get in to the next game. You know what? Normally I would go away at this point and we'd just, you know, skip forward to the Stockport game. But it's a Friday night. I've got nothing better to do, to do with my time. Let's just do it live in one take. Why not? Let's save editing Jack some hassle. And who, who knows? Maybe something magical will happen between then and now. I say that like I'm expecting something to happen. I'm not. Thinking about it. I didn't have any new budget stuff come in to start January, so maybe I should consider asking the board for some stuff. Can I ask for an increased wage budget? Can we do it? Stockport to a top. How did they get on in their most recent game? They did win in the end, so that's a shame. They've won four of their last five. Not going to be easy to dislodge them. So you can see here, overall board happiness is very, very good. Can I ask you about the finances? A larger wage budget. Uh... I need the edge in the battle for promotion. They're not willing to do it due to the current financial situation. There's almost no point in asking for transfer budget. Is there anything else we can ask for here? I can ask for more scouts. What about increasing the youth level? Apparently, the club's current financial situation means he's not willing to put more in. I mean, we are making quite a heavy loss at a rapid rate, but I will look at Alexander and say, you made us go professional. I didn't have a choice in this. This is why we're struggling. Maybe he'll realise that. Um, one other thing, actually, that I totally forgot to mention, and it comes around every so often. Youth candidates, I did have the, the email between last episode and this episode today. Apparently, it's a terrific group of players coming through and could be a real golden generation. We've heard that before. I'll believe it when I see it. Um, but we just have a goalkeeper that seems to be the person that the staff are talking about, and then they're kind of indifferent on lots of other players. So... 
I'm not sure how it can be a golden generation when there's so much, I don't want to say negativity, but mehness, I guess, around the players coming in. But nevertheless, we'll, we'll wait with eager anticipation. And I've just realised, hold the phone, stop going forward. I forgot I forgot to rest the players, everyone. Let's, let's give them a little rest. Give them a little rest, Jack. There you go. Hopefully they'll be close to 100% condition. I don't think I'm going to change the team going into this next game. It kind of feels unnecessary to do so. Recent form across this entire start in 11, with the exception of Smolio, has been good. I would be very interested to know, of course, um, a new football manager patch dropped in the last month. And as part of that, they changed one-on-ones. Goalkeeping ratings before they fixed one-on-ones were quite good because you actually got goalkeepers with good average ratings. I feel like ever since the update, because they're not saving the same number of one-on-ones they once were, it's kind of gone back to the same old football manager average ratings for goalkeepers. Is it just me or are my goalkeepers absolutely rubbish? Please do let me know. Answers on a postcard. Maybe I'm going crazy. Crew face late pressure to sign Karol Milek. Who is Karol Milek? He plays for a Polish team. I actually know a surprisingly large amount about this guy, considering we've never scouted him. I guess it's because he played for Newcastle and then Newark Flower Serve before moving afar to Poland to play. If you were wondering, by the way, um, scouting assignments. At the moment, I've just got the scouts just basically looking at... Um, just players across the whole of the UK, not really looking for anything specific. It's one of those situations right now where I don't have any money to spend on a specific position. So rather than, you know, try and sign someone for a specific position, I've just got the scouts looking at players across the whole of the UK, which is providing some quite interesting results. There's been a few players in Northern Ireland who have been thrown up. Um, knowing my look now, I won't be able to find them. Um, but yeah, the, the, there's prospects being thrown out there and obviously we'll keep an eye on what gets scouted and what gets thrown our way. Apparently Tyree Wilson is quite good. I can't help but feel like that rating that's been given is a little inaccurate. Of course, you've always got to give your scouts a little bit of a, what's what's the right word, a sceptical glance. You know, you can't always trust what they're saying, especially in the lower levels here. They'll tell you a player's the best thing since sliced bread. And then it turns out they're like Marmite and you just you just don't like them. Anyway, that's a, I don't really know what that oxymoron... That's not even an oxymoron. Metaphor. <laughs> an oxymoron is when you say two opposites like cold sweat. Didn't know this was going to turn into an English lesson. Please help me. Anyway, our game's not been postponed, thankfully, although Woking's game has. It's fourth versus first. So this is a big game. I have quite a lot of nervous energy about me. You might have noticed... <laughs> that in some of the discussion in this episode. This has been a huge episode in terms of the games. Players have recovered quite well, so we're going to stick with what we know. I'm not going to change anything here. You can see lots of nice green links between our players. At this point, this is quite a settled starting eleven, And uh, despite you know this game coming so soon after the last one, fitness is relatively good in the team. And I want us to be at our best here. Stockport County, a team who do not concede many at all. They are top of the league. We desperately need a win here. If we were to lose to them, we, we would probably be waving goodbye to any hopes of winning the league. I will have the league table up just so you can get a rough idea of exactly how this game's playing out. So going into this game, we are eight points behind them with a game in hand. A win here could close that gap to five with a game in hand. That's the situation and, well... It, it's not the same. Well, it, it is still the same situation, but we are now losing. So that's not good. That is not good. There's not much of a better way to phrase it than that. Who, who do we throw under the bus here? Gouda. Is that Gouda? It definitely is Gouda. Just Gouda things. I mean, to be fair, Smolio's just been caught praying on his knees in front of goal, which probably isn't going to help him make a save. That's not really the start we wanted, is it now, lads? Going to go with a quick demand more shout. Now it's important not to concede again. We need to steady the ship here. And while they've got a set piece, you know, to be fair, Stockport County, they're top of the league. They were expected to do very, very well this year. But I still want to give them a good match. And, well, we are two goals down. And whatever way you look at it, that's a little bit of a disaster. And this makes for quite a contrast compared to our previous game. Joe Ball with his second of the year. David Woodrow with the assist. Ball wins the initial header. Laid back by Woodrow. 
Small U again has just done something weird and I know someone's going to look at that and go, that is atrocious goalkeeping. It's just what goalkeeping in Football Manager is. I feel like at a point you have to squint and ignore the goalkeeping. They've just scored, but it was offside. I am I'm panicking here, folks. I am rocked. You know what? I'm going to drop Wern and DKM deeper to make more of a midfield four. And I'm also going to be Warrington to deep line playmaker on defend. Let's see if that can help our case a little bit. Because right now, Stockport, they are bullying us. I mean, Norris, that is a questionable pass, my friend. Gives it to Smith. What a save by Smolyo. We'll, we'll ignore any time he doesn't make a save and just big up the big saves that he makes. That was a great stop, though, to tip it over the crossbar. Now whipped in. Gouda heads it out. Harrett at the edge of the box will try and keep it alive, but I feel like that's got to be the chance gone. Please end the highlight, Football Badger, or send Woodrow off. That was a disgraceful tackle. Give him a red ref. Oh, my God, he's actually given him a red. Right. Hold the phone. Hold the... F we're, going, we're going back attacking. We're, we're pushing them back forward. I will keep Warrington on defend. Stockport County are down a man. I was not expecting that to be a red card. I half appealed for it in tongue-in-cheek. They're playing with one fewer man in midfield. So they're playing with out-wide midfielders. That's a curious decision. In terms of what I'm going to do for the second half... I'm going to move Wern and DKM deeper again, just because they're playing a three-man central midfield, and I feel like we are going to need to compete in that area. But I am going to set both of the wide men to be on attacking duty. And in possession, I really want us to stretch teams wide. I want us to focus the play down the wings here and play at a slightly higher tempo, knowing um that stockport are playing without any wide midfielders i think there's space to be exploited there particularly if we can double up on their fullbacks much like we did against york that's what we're going to attempt to do at the very least as we injure one of their players i mean an hour gone and things really aren't changing in this game right now we are failing to make anything of this fixture and we need to change some stuff up i'm going to bring a misador in i think i'm going to bring in brenia Diaz, I want to try something crazy. This might not work, but I'm going to try it. Um, I'm going to play DKM as a centre attack in mid. I'm going to play him on Shadow Striker. I'm going to move Warrington across and bring in Diaz. I'm going to play Diaz as an advanced playmaker because he is quite a creative player. And I'm going to tell the fullbacks to just get up the wing a little bit. We're going to play this. We're, we're taking a leaf out of York City's book. In terms of what I want to do, not necessarily play down the wing quite so much anymore, although I do try and work it into a into the box. Um, out of possession, let's just press a little harder, I think. I think we need to. Defensive width as well, sit narrow, especially knowing how narrow they are. I guess we can still look for the overlaps. I just feel like we need to win that battle in the centre of the midfield, and actually DK might be able to help in that regard. I mean, at the end of the day, we're two goals down. We need to roll the dice a little. Things have really not gone our way. We've got a set piece here. Diaz whips it in the Venezuelan. DKM was looking, I think, there for the header. Falls back to Diaz, though. Dinks it back in. Back post. Mampala's there. It may have been Mampala who went for the initial header in a case of mistaken identity. But either way, Diaz, on off the bench, gets an assist, the Venezuelan. And, well, that fighting spirit... Coming through in this team here. Diaz dinks it in. Defender misses a crucial header. And Mampala's there to bundle it over the line. There's time in this game. There is time in this game. Although we are committing more and more men up the field. And that is going to leave us exposed. They try and get the ball out. You can see we just outnumber them. And now DKM alongside Mampala and Emisador in the centre is causing all kinds of havoc. Norris the left back tries to get it in. Doesn't beat the initial effort. Second ball in. A Dunstan... All the way up at right wing back here. Passes it. And miss the door. Offside. Offside. Stop celebrating, Jack. I actually threw my hands up in celebration. It's very, very awkward. That must have been very tight. Oh, I don't think he's... Uh, um, I, I don't know if he's offside. I don't know what that noise is I've made either. That was the sound of my brain processing whether or not it was an offside or not. Another highlight, though. With 15 minutes left, this t this fixture feels like it's flipped. Brown. I thought for a second he was just going to boot it straight at our attacker's face. 
And Misador, you can see he's looking for that big ball over the top to him. Always sat on the shoulder of the last man. Collins with it at left back, plays it back. They are struggling to find an out ball here. I mean, cue them to score, of course, but they're losing that battle in the midfield suddenly. And DKM now picks up. Mampala's making the run. DKM gets dispossessed, but it falls to Norris. The ginger ninja, what can he do? Into the centre, and Missador nods it down. DKM hits the woodwork. Could Dunstan keep it alive? Oh, gosh, that was shocking by the right back. We'll go for one last shelter to Man Moore, but we're already on very attacking. Ball whipped in. He's been missed, and Brenia Diaz has scored. And Missador and Diaz, the subs with the impact. Do we go for the tickler blow? Do we keep on pushing? I think we have to. And Missador crosses it, and Keeper comes out, doesn't get there. Brenia Diaz, that might be his first senior goal for the club. And Missador turns provider. Could we do the full transition and turn this all the way around? It, it may not happen, but to just even get this back to 2-2 is an achievement in itself. It's not going to happen, but I'm very pleased with what we saw out there. What a performance by Brenia Diaz. He picks up man of the match. He was subbed on with 25 minutes left, and he does that. You were brilliant, boys. You were... I, I will admit, and I will hold up my hand, I have been guilty of not changing the system enough when it's not working here at Tau Law. I would like to claim at least a little bit of credit for that result, because that is superb. And to salvage a draw from that position is no mean feat. You can see, looking at the league table, between, really, you could even maybe include Hartlepool in this, but certainly between ourselves and Stockport, it's very, very close. And all the teams here, I mean... Second and third place have lost four games of their first 30. That is incredibly low. Um, to put things into perspective, if I'm not mistaken, in real life, Barrow in the Vanarama National League after 33 games this year are on, I want to say, 63 points. So, yeah, if you were to compare this table here to the table in real life, you'd, you would see the points I'm making. Basically, Everyone, at least at the top of the table here, especially the top four, playing so flawlessly and all it's going to take is a slight dip in form and it could be anyone's game. The, the title race is very much still alive and we have still got Stockport to play and we play them at the start of February, which I think is when we have to come back. That is another huge game. It's weird to think, but with this first Stockport game getting pushed back and back and back and back and back... We're going to be taking them on next time, and I'm really, really relishing it. It's going to be a very, very fun one. Hopefully, I see you guys at the start of February for that. Let me know what you made of this episode down in the comments. Crazy two games, some good, good goals, some entertaining action as well, which we have been long overdue. Hopefully, it can continue. Anyway, folks, leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments who your player of the season is so far. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.